Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We're going to continue reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 2. We are going to read today from text 47 to 48. Does anyone remember what we had read yesterday? Snehaji, since it's your birthday, would you like to say something? Uh, okay, a good time. What I remember is uh, Bhagavad Gita gives us the knowledge that we are not the body, but we are the soul. And by being in association with devo devotees, Changing and chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, and by following the four regulative principle principles, that's how we can we can uh, realize the knowledge. Realize the, yeah, realize that you know that that mm. we are not the body; we are the soul. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ajamil is fully determined to engage now in devotional service. And so he goes mm -hmm. to her and he does the deity worship at, uh, mm -hmm. at a wish temple. Now he's absorbed in the form of the Lord. I think did this much. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And also just with a minute of association with a devotee mm -hmm. to have the realization. Yeah. And also so the, association of devotee brings all perfection. Yes. It, it's very, very important. Mm -hmm. And no matter what, they, it, it was also emphasized that uh, he just uh, called the Nam Abhas once mm -hmm. and in the last two verses it was mentioned that how how evil he was he was a good Brahmin but how evil he became and he forgot all the Dharmic Shastras and he did wrong things but just by Nam Abhas he he got the perfection he he got all his sins were dissolved and if a person wants to get free from the material entanglement, then if he remembers Krishna's names, forms, and rupa and leelas, and he he gives it to others also, and he do the kirtan, then he gets free from all his sins. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. And then it was also mentioned about the verse from the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, verse mm. 9. Janma mm. karma chame divyam. Evam yo veti tatvata. Yatva deham punar janma. Neti mam eti sojun. Yeah. What does that mean? Means one who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance, Krishna saying, and activities does not, upon leaving the body, takes his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Juna. Krishna is saying this to Arjuna. Yeah. Yeah. And then also a plane comes and he leaves his body and then a golden plane comes and takes a Ajamil mm. to the Vishnu Lok. Yeah. And who comes in the plane? Who comes to take him? The Vishnu Dutas. Yeah. The Vishnu Dutas. Okay, thank oh, you Vishnu so much. Dutas, right? Thank you. So, yeah. so let's get And so this also reading. proves that whomever you huh. remember at the time of death, you go to their dham. So because oh, yeah. Ajamil was in the Vishnu, he was remembering. Uh, he was praying at the Vishnu temple in Haridwar. 
So he went to the dham of Vishnu. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And I think Krishna. that's the most, most, right? Important thing to remember at the time of death. Right? Yeah. Uh, it, I think it was mentioned in when we read earlier, the highest perfection of human life is to remember God at the time of death. Yeah. It's true. So one may say, oh, well, why should I remember God now while I'm living? I'll just remember him at the time of death. What do you think? We have, no, we have to have that abhyas. We have to start. Abhyas, that's right. Yes. Practice. Yeah, we have to practice. It. That's right. Yes. Thank you. So let's continue to read. Ya etam paramam goyam. ये <laughs> Yascha Bhaktyanukirtaye Yascha Bhaktyanukirtaye Yadi Api Amangalo Martyo Yadi api Vishnu loke mahi yate Vishnu loke mahi yate Translation by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swamishna Prabhupada Because this very confidential historical narration has the potency to vanquish all sinful reactions, one who hears or describes it with faith and devotion is no longer doomed to hellish life, regardless of his having a material body and regardless of how sinful he may have been. Indeed, the Yamadutas who carry out the orders of Yamaraj do not approach him even to see him. After giving up his body, he returns home back to Godhead, where he is very respectfully received and worshipped. So just by hearing the story of Ajama, one's sinful reactions goes away, hearing it or describing it with faith and devotion. One no need no longer needs to go to the hellish planets, no matter how sinful one is. All one's sinful reactions is gone. The Yama, Yamadutas don't come. And what Sukadev Goswami is saying that he in fact returns home back to Godhead. Where he is very respectfully received and worshipped. Jai. So this is the, the fruit of hearing this Ajamil Katha. Mriya Mano Harir Nama Priya Manu Hare Nama Granan Putro Pacharitam Granan Putro Upacharitam Ajamilo P. Agatha Ajamilo P. Agatha Kim Uta Shataya Granan Kim Uta Shataya While suffering at the time of death, Ajamal chanted the holy name of the Lord. And although the chanting was directed toward his son, he nevertheless returned home back to Godhead. Therefore, if one faithfully and inoffensively chants the holy name of the Lord, where is the doubt that he will return to Godhead? At the time of death, one is certainly bewildered because his bodily functions are in disorder. At that time, even one who throughout his life has practiced chanting the holy name of the Lord 
may not be able to chant the Hare Krishna mantra very distinctly. Nevertheless, such a person receives all the benefits of chanting the holy name. While the body is fit, therefore, why should we not chant the holy name of the Lord loudly and distinctly? If one does so, it is quite possible that even at the time of death, he will be properly able to chant the holy name of the Lord with love and faith. In conclusion, one who chants the holy name of the Lord constantly is guaranteed to return home back to Godhead without a doubt. So Sukadev Goswami is saying that although Ajamil, he was he chanted, he was just calling his son, but because he chanted inoffensively, he went back home, back to Godhead. So similarly, if anyone who chants with faith and who chants inoffensively will also go back home, back to Godhead. So Prabhupada is pointing out that one at the time of death may not be able to chant or may not be able to chant distinctly. But if one has practiced chanting throughout the life, then for sure one is going to go back home, back to Godhead. So, and Prabhupada is saying that why? So, one may not be able to chant when one is leaving the body. So why not chant when we when we have a good health, when we are able to chant? And then it is possible that one may even be able to chant at the time of death. Hmm. So there's supplementary note to this chapter. Shla Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur's commentary to text 9 and 10 of this chapter form a dialogue concerning how one can become free from all sinful reactions simply by chanting the holy name of the Lord. So, Srila Prabhupada here is giving us the commentary of Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur to text 9 and 10. Someone may say it may be accepted that by chanting the holy name of the Lord, one becomes free from all the reactions of sinful life. However, if one commits sinful acts in full consciousness, not only once, but many, many times, he is unable to free himself from the reactions of such sins, even after atoning for them for 12 years or more. How is it possible then that simply by once chanting the holy name of the Lord, one immediately becomes free from the reactions of such sins? So it, Vishala Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur is explaining it in a form of a dialogue that someone may ask the question that if one is committing sinful acts intentionally, understanding that he is being sinful, intentionally he is committing, so one is not able to atone for them. Uh, one is not able to get rid of the sinful reactions even if one atones for 12 years or more. So how is it possible? Uh, that simply by chanting once the holy name of the Lord, one gets free from sinful reactions. Shla Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur replies by quoting verses 9 and 10 of this chapter. The chanting of the holy name of Lord Vishnu is the press process of atonement for a thief of gold or other valuables, for a drunkard, for one who betrays a friend or relative, for one who kills a brahmana or for one who indulges in sex with the wife of his guru or another superior. It is also the best method of atonement for one who murders women, the king or his father, for one who slaughters cows and for all other sinful men. Simply by chanting the holy name of Lord Vishnu, such sinful persons may attract the attention of the Supreme Lord who therefore considers, because this man has chanted my holy name, my duty is to give him protection. So, so the question is raised, how one intentionally commits such, so much sins, how by chanting one gets purified? So Shila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur is saying, because when one chants, then one may attract the mercy of the Lord. The Lord says, oh, this person is taking my, he's, he's approaching me for protection. So it's, 
So I have to, it's my duty to give him protection. And that's why Krishna is saying, surrender unto me and I'll protect you from all sinful reactions. Because he can protect us. He, he can give us protection. He's simply saying, ask me for this protection and I will give it to you. One may atone for sinful life and vanquish all sinful reactions by chanting the holy name. Although this is not called atonement. Ordinary atonement may temporarily protect a sinful person, but it does not completely cleanse his heart of the deep-rooted desire to commit sinful acts. Therefore, atonement is not as powerful as the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. So atonement does not take away our desire to sin. It sure can take away the sinful reactions. So that's why I said it's not as powerful as chanting the holy name of the Lord. In the Shastras, it is said that if a person only once chants the holy name and completely surrenders unto the lotus feet of the Lord, the Lord immediately considers him his ward and is always inclined to give him protection. This is confirmed by Sridhar Swami. So Sridhar Swami is another great Acharya. He's written commentary to Srimad Bhagavatam. Thus, when Ajamal was in great danger of being carried off by the order carriers of Yamaraj, the Lord immediately sent his personal order carriers to protect him. And because Ajamal was freed from all sinful reactions, the Vishnu Dutas spoke on his behalf. So anyone who calls out to the Lord, who calls, who chants the holy name is calling out to the Lord and the Lord says, oh, this person is calling me. It's my duty to give him protection. That's why when Ajamil called him, he was not calling him, but anyway, because he said the holy name, the Lord sent his Vishnu Dutas. Ajamil had his had named his son Narayan. And because he loved the boy very much, he would call him again and again. Although he was calling for his son, the name itself was powerful because the name Narayan is not different from the Supreme Lord Narayan. When Ajamil named his son Narayan, all the reactions of his sinful life were neutralized. And as he continued calling his son, and thus chanting the holy name of Narayan thousands of times, he was actually unconsciously advancing in Krishna consciousness. So each time he was calling Narayan, Narayan, he was advancing in his spiritual life, although he didn't even know it. One may argue, since he was constantly chanting the name of Narayan, how was it possible for him to be associating with a prostitute and thinking of wine? By his sinful actions, he was bringing suffering upon himself again and again. And therefore, one may say that his ultimate chanting of Narayan was the cause of his being free. However, his chanting would then have been a Namapra. Namno balad yasya ki papa buddhi, one who continues to act sinfully and tries to neutralize his sins by chanting the holy name of the Lord, is a Nama Pradhi, an offender to the holy name. So this Nama Pradhi, if one says that, oh, well, I'm going to do sinful acts, and I'll chant, and the holy name will take away all my sinful reactions, that is offensive. Offense to the holy name. In response, it may be said that Ajamal's chanting was inoffensive, because he did not chant the name of Narayan with the purpose of counteracting his sins. He did not know that he was addicted to sinful actions, nor did he know that his chanting of the name of Narayan was neutralizing them. Thus, he did not commit a Nama Pran, and his repeated chanting the holy name of Narayan while calling his son may be called pure chanting. Because of this pure chanting, Ajamil unconsciously accumulated the results of bhakti. Indeed, even his first utterance of the holy name was sufficient to nullify all the sinful reactions of his life. To cite a logical example, a fig tree does not immediately yield fruits, but in time the fruits are available. Similarly, Ajamil's devotional service <coughs> sorry, grow little by little. 
And therefore, although he committed very sinful acts, the reactions did not affect him. So as his, as his Sukriti kept on increasing, you know, because he kept chanting, he kept being purified, he kept advancing in spiritual life. So in the Shastras, it is said that if one chants the holy name of the Lord even once, the reactions of past, present, or future sinful life do not affect him. To give another example, if one extracts the poison fangs of a serpent, this saves the serpent's future victims from poisonous effects, even if the serpent bites repeatedly. Similarly, if a devotee chants the holy name even once inoffensively, this protects him eternally. He need only wait for the results of the chanting to mature in due course of time. Thus, in the Bhaktivedanta purports of the sixth canto, second chapter, Srimad Bhagavatam in Tatar, a jamal delivered by the Vishnu Dutas. So, Prabhupada is saying one can point the question that, oh, he was chanting, then why was he committing sinful actions again and again? He was committing sins. So one may say, no, no, it was his final chanting of Naraya that saved him. But Prabhupada is saying, no, all of his chanting was Namabhas, inoffensive. All was helping him. All of it. Uh, so one time chanting inoffensively, it is to our eternal credit. It can hear Prabhupada is saying, it protects him eternally, even once if one has chanted inoffensively. He need only wait for the results of the chanting to mature in due course of time. Questions, comments? Um, Hare Krishna, Shilpaji, just one question. So that means that slowly the uh, all his sins were dissolving, right? And then he became he became purified slowly and eventually when he was chanting. So I just wanted to ask you one thing that uh, when we take initiation, that's our second birth, right? So at that time, all the sins are dissolved. Uh, well, we, we can't say all, but we can say a lot of them. Because we can't, we can't, you know, we can't put all our sins onto the spiritual master. It's not fair to him either, right? Mm. But, but we can say yeah, a lot, lot of them are dissolved at initiation. Mm. Yeah. And then you become purified, and then you can chant, like as you say that. Um, you need to be sinful. Uh, you need to be free from all the sins and able to chant more pure names, right? That's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah, but even initially when one begins chanting, mm -hmm. you know, one, one may chant inoffensively because one doesn't know. One is, mm. is not... Ex one, may not commit any ex offenses. One may not expect anything from the holy name. Mm -hmm. So one mm -hmm. may chant inoffensively even at the beginning. Okay. Okay. So like when I just get up, when I sit down and when I chant without any desire just to please Krishna, that is inoffensive. That's right. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Hare Krishna. So I have uh, heard that as long as you're in this same life, your sins don't get dissolved, but then the suffering is lesser because you have evolved. I don't know if that's right. But here we are hearing that one who chants the holy name, his sins are dissolved. The sins uh, are After the passing, reactions. the judging... Yeah, after the passing, there is a judging. And while we are still in this life, I heard, I'm not sure if this is right, but while you're still in the same life, your, your suffering gets lesser because you're evolving. But the sins you have committed, you will suffer for that, but you won't feel that much pain 
that will be lesser. The reactions, the reactions will be there, but it will be lesser comparatively. That's what I've heard and understood. I may be yeah, wrong. The reactions, I don't for sure, for sure. Yes. The ones, ones, uh, suffering becomes less because one is not yes. so attached. One is yes. not so attached. Yes. One has become yes. more purified. Yes, yes, yes. But That's what also, I've heard. And, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. but also we have to understand that one who chants the holy name inoffensively, his sinful reactions are being burned. Because otherwise, that is how he doesn't need to take another birth again. Yeah. Right? That's okay. how he's getting liberation. Otherwise, he would have had to take so many more births to suffer the reactions of whatever sins he has committed. Okay. Yeah, and that's what Krishna is saying. Just surrender unto me. I will deliver you from all sinful life reactions. Do not fear, he says. Okay. In Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. And sure, of course, one who's chanting his his response to the suffering is is different than one who's not because one is more detached then, not not so involved, not so attached. So automatically the suffering the the yeah, the suffering that one feels is lesser. Sorry, you were saying something. Yes, Hare Krishna. Um, yes, uh, Shilpa, something it was mentioned about 12 years, 12 years of chanting or what? 12 years, it was mentioned that one who does uh, sins who does oh, consciously, consciously, one who's mm -hmm. consciously committing sins, even if they do prayaschit, atonement for 12 years, one cannot free himself from such sinful reactions. So the question may be raised that how is it possible that once chanting the holy name of the Lord, one can become free from the reactions of such sins. In that regard, it is said that prayaschit, even if you do for 12 years or more, you may not be able to free yourself from the sinful reactions. You may still have to go to hellish planet for it. But yeah. once chanting the holy name of the Lord, Thank you. Mm -hmm. because we are we are attracting the mercy of the Lord, we are pleading to Him, please give me your protection. And then the Lord says, "Ah, it is my duty to protect this person. He's seeking my protection, so it's my duty to give him protection." And that's how we get saved from all sinful reactions. And that's why I'm saying this Sarva Dharma Parityagya, what Krishna is saying. He says, surrender to me and I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. And surrender begins by chanting the holy name. And is it also that when we are reading this, then we need to have faith that the, the Harinam is so powerful. Only then it will impact, right? We need to have that faith in Shraddha. Well, but one ch one can chant even without... See, mm. Ajamil was mm. calling his son. Mm. But the Ajamil holy name Ajamil. acted. Mm. Right? He didn't know he's, he's chanting mm. the holy name. He, was, mm. he thought he's calling his son. Mm. Yeah. And it was only that he didn't, like, as you that's again why, mentioned that. Hmm. Uh -huh. That's why we Sorry. read earlier that even if a person does not know the meaning of the mm. name, does not know the power of the name, yeah. just as a medicine will act, the holy mm. name will act. act. Okay, yes. The holy so name like will he, act. But, what we have to yeah. do is avoid the offenses. What we do mm. is we commit offenses. That's what mm. stops, hinders our growth, okay. our advancement. Mm. So that's why it's being stressed in offensive chanting. Mm. Got your point. You know, so what are the 10 offenses and then avoiding the 10 offenses. Mm. I think what they mentioned here was one was that us naam ke bal pe aapko aparad nahi karna ke, you know, I'll I'm committing yeah. some sins and then I'll I'll chant the mala 
एंड वो अपराध मेरा मिट जाएगा देन इट विल नॉट राइट बिकॉज वी वी रेड दैट अजामिल वाज नॉट डूइंग दैट या दैट इज वन ऑफ द ऑफेंस ऑफ अजामिल वाज नॉट डूइंग दैट दैट्स एन ऑफेंस या दैट्स एन ऑफेंस बट अजामिल वाज नॉट डूइंग दैट दैट वुड आई सेइंग या दैट अजामिल वाज नॉट नॉट डूइंग ही डिड नॉट या he didn't even know that he is chanting mm. the holy mm. yeah yeah he was unconsciously he was getting all this spiritual advancement mm. he didn't yeah. even know yeah. thank you yeah yeah hari krishna so we'll go to chapter 3 yamaraj instructs his messengers as related in this chapter the yamadutas approach yamaraj who very exhaustively explain bhagavad dharma the religious principle of devotional service yamaraj thus satisfied the yamadutas who had been very disappointed yamaraj said although jamil was calling for his son he chanted the holy name of the lord narayan and simply by a glimpse of the chanting of the holy name he immediately achieved the association of lord vishnu's order carriers who saved him from your attempt to arrest him so the yamadutas were disappointed why because they thought ah this is a sinful man he is a rightful candidate we can take him to the hellish planets and we can punish him in so many ways but yamraj is telling him no just by nama bhas simply a glimpse of chanting of the holy name so he didn't even chant the pure name He's not calling out in love to Narayan, but because he's chanting inoffensively, he got liberation. The Vishnu Duta skin. This is quite all right. It is a fact that even a chronically sinful person who chants the holy name of the Lord, although not completely without offenses, does not take another material birth. This is what Yamraj is telling them by chanting the holy name of the Lord. Ajamil had met four order carriers of Lord Vishnu. They were very beautiful, and had quickly come to rescue him. Yamraj now described them. The Vishnu Dutas are all pure devotees of the Lord, the Supreme Person, in regard to the creation, maintenance, and annihilation of this cosmic manifestation. Neither King Indra, Varuna, Shiva, Brahma, the seven rishis. Nor I myself can understand the transcendental activities of the Supreme Lord, who is self-sufficient and beyond the reach of the material senses. So he's saying we are we we are unfit to understand the activities of the Supreme Lord. With material senses, no one can attain enlightenment about Him. The Lord, the Master of the illusory energy. Possesses transcendental qualities for the good fortune of everyone, and his devotees are also qualified in that way. So the pure devotees, they have revived their transcendental qualities. The Lord has transcendental qualities; every living entity has, but we have simply forgotten. Now we are thinking we are the body. the devotee is concerned only with rescuing the fallen souls from this material world apparently take birth in different places in the material world just to save the conditioned souls if one is somewhat interested in spiritual life the devotees of the lord protect him in many ways yamraj continued the essence of sanatan dharma or eternal religion is extremely confidential no one but the lord himself can deliver that confidential religious system to human society so only lord gives us the religious principles no human being can give us it is by the mercy of the lord that the transcendental system of religion can be understood by his pure devotees and specifically the 12 mahajans lord brahma narad muni lord shiva the kumaras kapila manu prahlad Janak, Bhishma, Bali, Sukadev Goswami, and me. Other learned scholars, headed by Jaimini, are almost always covered by the illusory energy, and therefore they are more or less attracted by the flowery language of the three Vedas, namely Rig, Yajur, and Sa, which are called Trayi. So, the Lord can be understood. 
by his mercy, by his pure devotees, and not by anyone else. So even scholarship cannot, one cannot understand the law because there are so many scholars. So Trayavedya, tri, it's, it's said. I'm not sure why Atharva is not mentioned here. Because maybe because I don't know what does it deal with. But anyway, here it said the three Vedas are, are concerned um, flowery language. Usually they use the flowery language is for the Karmkan section, doing rituals, getting heavenly benefits. Instead of becoming pure devotees, people captivated by the flowery words of these three Vedas are interested in the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies. Yeah, that's what's mentioned here. Mm -hmm. They cannot understand the glories of chanting the holy name of the Lord. Intelligent persons, however, take to the devotional service of the Lord. When they chant the holy name of the Lord without offenses, they are no longer subject to my rulings. If by chance they commit some sinful act, they are protected by the holy name of the Lord because that is where their interest lies. So the holy name is the Lord himself. So the Lord is saying, someone has chanted my name. Somebody has asked me for protection, so I will protect him. The four weapons of the Lord, especially the club and the Sudarshan Chakra, always protect the devotees. One who chants, hears, or remembers the holy name of the Lord without duplicity, or who prays or offers obeisances to the Lord, becomes perfect. Whereas even a learned person may be called to hell if he is bereft of devotional service. So this is what Yamraj is saying. After Yamraj thus described the glories of the Lord and his devotees, Sukadev Goswami further explained the potency of chanting the holy name and the futility of performing Vedic ritualistic ceremonies and pious activities for atonement. So Yamraj is saying that one who chants the holy name, hears or remembers the holy name without duplicity, or one who offers prayers to the Lord or offers obeisances to the Lord becomes perfect. Whereas someone, maybe a learned scholar, and may have a lot of knowledge, but if he has no devotion, he may be even called to hellish planets. This is what Yamraj is saying here. And then... So we will hear, we will read from text one tomorrow. Did anyone want to add anything? Any comments? It is just that so beautiful that Ajamil did Nam Abhas and still he got delivered and everything was done. So like, how about the people? How about the devotees who are doing knowingly? Like they want, they're doing it to please Krishna. Yeah. So it is so powerful. Usne to anjane mein kara, lekin jo samaj ke kar rahe hai, unke liye to kitna bada, kitna fal hai. Malab, though they are not expecting, but still. Their destination is glorious. Their activities yes, are glorious. Destiny. They are glorious. Mm. Their destination is glorious. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. So it is so powerful. Yeah. Krishna's name. Ladies and gentlemen, the way. Yes. Shrimad Bhagavatam Kiche, Shla Prabhupada Kiche, Gorbhatta Vinda Kiche. Thank you so much for listening.